Welcome to Street Stoics, the podcast where we discuss Stoicism, the ancient philosophy of living a good life. I'm your host, Bryce, and I'm joined by my co-host, Benny. We're here to help you apply Stoic wisdom to your everyday life, no matter what obstacles you're facing, whether it be work stress, relationship issues, or just the general ups and downs of life. Stoicism has something to offer us all. All right. So uh, here we are. Another day, another... Uh... Stoic discussion. How you doing, Benny? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm like, full of courage today. How are you feeling? More courageous as the, as the moments pass. So let, let's talk about it. So today we're talking about courage, right? And and more importantly, stoic courage. But uh, yeah, what do you got, Benny? What do you think? When I say the word courage, what's the first thing that comes to your head? It's a, that, That's a good question, you know, because it's something if you just think about it, oh, courage, I'm courageous. You know, we think of a, a warrior or you know, someone who steps in front of a danger, but it is a good concept, especially if, if we think of, uh, about it like uh, from the virtues. And it's one of the four cardinal virtues, and we can see it, you know, in, uh, not just in Stoicism, but in religions and other, you know, belief systems coming back. So what is it really, right? And I, as I was thinking about it, I kind of, you know, came down a sentence that I think it means it's like courage is doing what is just, temperate, and wise. One that's difficult or dangerous, right? Or overcoming one's uh, limitations and uh, and uncomforts. That's kind of what I think about it. It's not always related to you know war or you know what we obviously think about you know a lot of the times. But I think it has many applications on a daily level. I, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about that first kind of you know take on it? Yeah, I mean, similar, right? It, it's we take these words for granted, don't we? It's like saying, oh, what does courage mean? And you go, well, it means this. And then you actually look it up and it's like, oh, it has several meanings. And it's like, there are things in life that we're practicing being courageous and you never really thought courage would apply. I mean, this is what I found going through this exercise, kind of studying up before we talked about this today. So I'm going to use like the Merriam-Webster's couple standard definitions of courage. And the first one is the ability to do something that frightens one. And I guess a lot of times we apply that to war or things where there's physical danger or big risk involved. I think that's what just shoots to people's heads just because that's the easiest kind of way to apply that definition. And then the second definition is strength in the face of pain or grief, which goes along with the first definition, but you you could apply that a little differently situationally. So all of those, you know, what you said, and, and then you also mentioned virtue, and we'll talk about virtue and and stoic virtues, right? Because courage is one of them and why that's important. It's one of their cardinal virtues. And we'll discuss that a little bit too. But I mean, right off the top, that's what I have about courage. And then the question then becomes, well, we're talking about virtue now, right? Because courage is often referred to as a virtue. So then then we get to the definition of what is virtue. And I'll lead off with that. And I have two points for that. And so virtue is a behavior showing high moral standards. And then the second one I had is going to be a good or useful quality of a thing. So it's preferable, right? These are virtues, in my mind, are, are just, like I said, the high moral standard really mel- meant something to me. Something that's not easily a- obtained, something that's usually good for the masses, preferable to just interacting in society in, in, in a good way. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just kind of spitballing at this point, but. What do you think about that? We've talked about courage real quickly. What do you think about virtue? Again, you know, as as you mentioned, that it's concepts that just easily just uh, assimilate, right? Or be virtuous. But uh, I think you, what you touched on, you know, that the highest moral good, and uh, that is a that is a good definition. I think from a stoic standpoint as well, right? That's why it's the you know the the highest good to live virtuous, and that's you know, living in accordance with nature. But what does that highest moral good mean again, right? And you mentioned uh, you mentioned there to look at the, the larger whole, the biggest, you know, the society. And I think it also boils down to what is the truth. That's the part of philosophy, you know, the the love of wisdom, and to find out what is true, and base, you know, the right action on that. So sometimes it's sometimes, and this again comes. To, comes back to courage sometimes being virtuous isn't something necessarily good to you and good in the sense of like health wealth or any of those preferred indifferences but sometimes that's why it takes courage to do something when we try to strive for that highest moral good and i think how you described it sounds perfect but it's 
again, it's these concepts that we have to try to really grasp and see what it's like. And when I think about it, it is that idea of, okay, what is the right action in the moment, right? And that's the, from, from a stoic standpoint, and I think from a larger standpoint, that's when you know what the virtuous thing to do is, when you are acting according to what is true. I don't know if you, if you like that link with truth uh, and that with, uh, with virtue. Yeah, I do. And this is where it starts to get a little messy, I guess, or a, a little bit more confusing. Because, you know, we, so we put what courage is, uh, that stands alone, and then you have virtue. But then most people think courage is a virtue. That's just, just by itself. And we could deliberate about, you know, what is a virtue and what is a vice, right? The vice is opposite of virtue, you know, something that uh, you lean towards that's negative for you or society at large or a hindrance, uh, an obsession, and an addiction of some kind that was generally seen as healthy. So when we talk about virtues, you know, people might even argue, you always hear patience is a virtue, but a lot of things could be a virtue. But so in a Stoic's mind, though, definitely, I think most people would, would say if you had to categorize courage as a virtue and advice, they would say a virtue. But Stoics take it one step further. They say that courage is not only virtuous, but that it's a cardinal virtue. So these are the four main pillars of Stoic belief or surround this, the, the four ideas, four key virtues that they've identified as most important or most helpful when you're trying to you know, navigate the world, navigate life, and, and live to your highest personal nature. And we can talk about that a little bit too, your highest sense of self, your best version of self. So courage is one of those. So this is incredibly important to Stoics. So then... When we talk about courage as being a core pillar stoic virtue, well, how does it apply? Well, what are the other three? We might as well throw them out there because we're going to talk about those other three in, in upcoming conversations, right? You have courage, which we're talking about today. You have justice, you have temperance, and you have wisdom. And there are those out there, well-learned about stoics and and well-read and understand the philosophy in depth, one common author, somebody that many people might know who's listening to this, is Ryan Holiday. And Ryan Holiday actually goes out of the way to out of his way to say that it's not only important, that it's the most important of all of the cardinal virtues. And so when you look into that, you would say, well, why is that? Well, you kind of need courage to execute on the other three. When you think about it, how does courage apply to justice? Well, to be just, to be just in any in any given situation, then you have to have some intestinal fortitude. You might have to have courage, right, to stand up for the oppressed or or, or something that isn't correct, not leaning into uh, the mass popular belief. Sometimes you have to be in the minority. Sometimes you have to take high risks to be just. This is an internal battle that we have, and it takes courage to resist impulses, to resist desires, uh, habits, things that are just tendencies for us that mean may be bad for us and the community at large, which the Stoics are always concerned about. And then wisdom, right? Wisdom is really not just being smart. It, it's having experience with knowledge, not just having knowledge, it's having experience with knowledge and then refining that knowledge into best practices. Well, there's trial and error involved with that. So you have to risk putting yourself out there. You have to risk making decisions and, and putting your courage into practice and seeing what the what the outcomes are. So there's uh, to get wise is not something that's passive. This is something that you have to take risks for, and that involves courage. So you can see where courage ties into the other three of the four cardinal virtues. So I don't know what you think about all that. Yeah, I love how you tied that in, you know, and I think courage is the virtue that, that links to action, right? And and how you described, you know, how it links to the virtues in, in themselves and what it needs to, what it takes to be just and wise and tempered we that is the knowledge right we we can we can find out what is the just thing to do we can try to be wise by taking more knowledge and putting it into practice we can we can learn to be tempered in our in our actions but it takes that courage that's that driving force behind it and i think that that's why it's one of those the virtues because i ask myself okay why is it the virtue and i think go back to like first principle thinking and i think like, okay you know is there anything better than courage and I can't think it if we if we think about it if we if we look at actions right because it is in, in my opinion it is linked to actions to know when to act um, and and sometimes to just act when it feels you know when it's instinctively and impulsively but that's where we gotta be 
uh, careful because we can also uh, act cowardly uh, out of impulse. So that's when we need that reason and logic, assess the moment and say, okay, this is the just thing to do and now I've got to act. And that's where that courage comes into play. So no, I, I, I liked how you, how you analyzed it and how you looked at it. I think that that is exactly what it is. When we look at courage, it's that, that step we take. And it's not just about when we go to war or fighting. It's also when in our daily life to make difficult decisions. For example, if you're not good at, uh, comfortable in a job, to make that decision to choose for yourself and to say, I'm not doing myself any justice, I need to move on. Or, or any other parts of your life that you feel that you need to make a change, but it's difficult, that's when you need courage. So that is where that virtue kind of spreads out to our daily lives. And I think that that's why it is that first principle thing which makes it a virtue above all other things related to action. I think that that's one of the, the key elements of, uh, of courage and what, what it makes, you know, what makes it stand out uh, from the other virtue. Yeah, I love what you said there as first principles and looking at some other examples of courage in literature. I came across a, a really good quote here. It, it, it comes from a novelist uh, named Cormac McCarthy who wrote a book called All the Pretty Horses. And there's an interaction between two characters there. And it said, quote, the world wants to know if you have cojones, if you are brave. And I, and I smiled when I thought, I mean, you always laugh at the, the cojones, right? You, you have the intestinal fortitude. But that's what the world wants to know. Are you brave? That, that we're being challenged every day. You could say it takes courage to get out of bed sometimes. It, it, depending on your life circumstances and Stoics believe in fate, and, and they actually love their fate. Uh, Amor fati, that's something we'll probably talk about. Uh, some terms like that, some uh, Latin terms that are important to, to Stoics. And so they not only did they believe in fate, but the sage, you know, the ultimate Stoic, embraces it and actually learns to love it. And so with that, though, fate gives us things, challenges, things to overcome. And like what I just said is it makes sometimes it just takes bravery to get out of bed because there's risk. There's risk to get up and take care of your business and your family if you have that or go to your job. Maybe it stresses you out. It's a, Maybe you're just a, a person who has a lot of difficulties and just getting around, uh, maybe you have physical difficulties and getting out of bed is a challenge uh, physically and you have to take risks to do that. So there is an opportunity to show your courageousness every day. And we all have to have some of that just to survive. I think those of us who can get to a point where we say, hey, the world is going to challenge us. It is about change. Fate is always on the plate. I didn't mean to rhyme that. But yeah, we you have to be courageous to win. You have to be courageous to survive. This is just our evolution as a species. Imagine if there was no courage. There is huge risk involved and minor risks uh, involved daily. And all of the accomplishments that we have today that we benefit from in this time and place, you could really look back as to courageous acts from previous generations. Going all the way back to the you know the the earliest days of the record, so courage is important. And I would just say, hey, everybody's listening. You're courageous too. You probably did something today that took some courage. It's it isn't this thing that's inaccessible, right? This is what Benny and I are talking about. It's a core or a cardinal virtue to Stoics. Why? Because it's accessible to everyone. You can choose to be courageous. You can choose to be just. You can choose to be temperate. You can choose to be wise. These things are available to all of us all the time, regardless of circumstance, regardless of what fate has put in front of us. But they've identified it as a key. This is the antidote. These four cardinal virtues are the antidote to the curveballs life is going to throw at you. To that point, too, it's also, I would add real quickly here, to go back to Stoic specifically, uh, you know, Seneca talked about courage. And he said something really I think helpful here. He actually he pitied people who've never experienced misfortune. He said, quote, you have passed through life without an opponent. He further said, no one can ever know what you're capable of, not even you. So we need that benchmark. He says he even pities the people who've had an easy life because it doesn't test you. And so you don't know what you're capable of until you've been tested. Progress is a function of measurement, you know, over time. And so we can't really measure ourselves if we're not challenged with anything. There is no winning without losing, right? There is no uh, courage without cowardice. 
there's always an opposite. There has to be uh, something you're measuring yourself against. And as a human, I think we're supposed to evolve and we're, we're always inching forward. That's the story of, of humanity. And so there we go. So not only, I love how the Stoics or Seneca in this specific passage says, not only is it okay to experience misfortune, but he pities the people who haven't experienced it because it won't let you execute on your courage. What do you think, Benny? Yeah, I love that. And and, and my quote is a little bit different from, from your quote and uh, because it's just a translation, right? And it's from uh, the, the On Providence is, uh, essay. And I like how it's one of my favorite ones. It goes like, you are unfortunate in my judgment for you have never been unfortunate. You have a past good life with no antagonist. No one will know what you're capable of, not even yourself. So I, yeah, I completely agree with what you said that he actually welcomes it. And that, that is a powerful part that even those who haven't had any misfortunes, they are pitied. They are to be pitied because they don't know their true worth. And I think that that's where something as courage comes into play, where if you really want to know yourself, which is one of the foundational points of, of any philosophy, right, where it starts, you need to have that courage to really delve into yourself, to ask yourself to this, those difficult questions. And that could be the first one of those obstacles that you have to face and overcome. A lot of these, uh, and this is where, you know, stoicism is one of the driving forces behind modern day therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy, because it, it wants to attack those underlying beliefs. And for that, if we want to do that, if we want to do that honestly and truly, we need to ask ourselves those difficult questions. And they are difficult because, you know, there's hurt, there's there are a lot of history behind them, and we don't want to face them. But that's why we really need them. And that brings me to one of the other, you know, quotes of, Seneca, which is interesting on this topic as well, he says, sometimes even to live is an act of uh, courage. And I think that that is one of those uh, key points where he, he shows like we need it even in every day of life, as you said, even to get out of bed. And we can read it from Marcus Aurelius. He writes about, you know, how difficult it is to get out of bed, but he needs to, right? It's his duty to perform. And it's our duty as human beings to do so, to get out of bed and to act, right, as a human and to, to make sure that we are our best selves for the society at large. So yeah, courage is a foundational leader to our everyday life. If you just go back to like today, you know, when you listen to this and you just ask yourself, how many difficult things have I done and how have I pushed myself to go through them? Or maybe moments where you lacked that courage, where you say, oh, I should have done this, but I didn't. And we can see that it comes back at every single step of at pretty much every action we do. So that's why it's one of those cardinal virtues. It's one of those essential parts of life to make sure that we live the right life, that we live the good life. Yeah, and you mentioned something there that I had written down too about cognitive behavioral therapy. And, you know, that's something that people listening can research, but it's a common practice in, in modern psychology where basically they try to help you get through problems incrementally by dealing with it head on, like Aurelius writes and as also and also as a popular book written by Ryan Holiday, the quote is the obstacle is the way. So it's it's a cognitive recognition that maybe a fear that we have, we're talking about courage, so maybe it's a fear that we have, but it isn't cognitively reasonable or rational. Because you know, Stoics are working out of reason and logic. So they said, hey, there's no reason or logic for me to be fearful of said thing. And then so you incrementally kind of work at it, but you don't work around it, you work through it. That takes courage. So that that's that's the crux of CBT is is incrementally increasing your, your your level of risk. And it takes some courage to do that to eventually get over the problem. So that's important that you mentioned the CBT. With with CBT it's an incremental uh, attack on, on your fears, but just pure and simply the obstacle is the way. And the obstacle is good. It's something we have to overcome. And to anything we have to overcome takes courage. And I would argue that without courage, you know, humanity would have ceased to exist quite some time ago. So it's critical. It's absolutely critical. And to identify it as uh, one of the four cardinal virtues that Stoics adhere to, it, I think, was the correct choice. Of all the virtues you could have picked, I think courage is massively important. So we've talked about, right? So we've talked about the basic definitions. And, uh, you know, courage and, and a virtue and then how those things mend together to form stoic courage. And then the benefits of, of uh, adhering to that as a cardinal rule or principle. And one other thing I wanted to mention to you is 
when we talk about virtues, that's something that the Stoics took from Socrates himself when he said virtue above all things. So they take this very seriously. So if you're living your life, if the successful life as a Stoic would outline is just to live a virtuous life, and this, this is what they've identified as one of the core virtues, when we talk about why, why do they see it that way? Why do they see it that way? And then why it makes sense to us. So we've already answered the question about why is it important, not only to Stoics, but why is it important to us? I mean, without courage, I mean, what is life? This risk reward, uh, the fear and overcoming of fear, it's, it's involved in many things we do every day. So I would challenge people, you know, when they're done listening to this, to think how they've been courageous each day. How are you courageous today? It took courage for me to change my tea, the, the flavor of my tea that I drank today because I didn't know if it was going to be good, but hey, I was willing to risk it. So I'm going to pat myself on the back for that, right? I mean, that's kind of a silly example, but there, like I said, just getting out of bed might be courageous. Like, what is it that you had to risk today or the uncomfortable thing you did for the right reasons? You should be applauded for that. And people do that every day. They make sacrifices for their family, for their friends, for just doing the right thing. You know, it's really courageous to live your life in a virtuous way, and it takes courage to do the right thing or to live to your highest self. And every time you do that, it should be noted because that's a, that's a, a wonderful thing. Yeah, and to build on that, just because it, it sometimes takes courage as well. Sometimes it takes courage to step over your beliefs that you've held for a while, right? The obtainment of knowledge is important. And as you mentioned, you know, some things that might seem trivial, you know, like buying some new kind of food or just having a new kind of routine, but also to challenge your own beliefs takes courage. And when you hear some other opinions, it's obviously, you know, it's oftentimes it's the ego that holds us back. So it takes courage to kind of fight that and to find that knowledge, to overcome those those boundaries that you set yourself by, for example, not listening to other people or maybe being a little bit close-minded. But that's where we need to where we need to step up as well and, and for ourselves, just to kind of save ourselves to understand what is true and what isn't. All right, Benny. So we just talked about courage, right? From in a, in a formal way and <laughs> kind of uh, a little bit uh, rigid and staunchy and and uh, got some good information out there. I think it, it was good to set that up. But I'm kind of interested in courage is how, you know, how you've seen things, how it's applied to your life or good instances that you've had when you've taken the risk and you've been courageous and maybe something that held you back that you, you were able to get through. The obstacle is the way you went right to the obstacle. Do you have anything? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I want to kind of highlight first of the moments that I feel now in retrospect where I haven't really been courageous because I think that is one of the, that is a part of my life. Come on, Come on. Yeah, you're you're a courageous guy. Don't 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 don't, don't discount yourself. I used to, <laughs> Benny, Benny Benny the courageous is the statue, the Roman statue that I that I picture in my mind. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, I've got to be self-critical, right? And I, and I think maybe now more, maybe now I'm a bit more courageous than before. But I I have a lot of instances, you know, where in relationships and and actions, you know, sometimes you feel like oh, I should have done something when you look back at yourself, right? And I think that those are. Um, I, I can't kind can of picture any any real examples right now. Yeah, maybe some, you know, when you feel like you should have stepped up with someone a little bit more, a friend, or, uh, you know, when you feel like a missed opportunity. And maybe it's courage, maybe it's other parts. But yeah, there, there are definitely, I feel like when I grew up, and coming back to that quote that you said by Seneca, which is why it resonates a lot with me, is, you know, that part of being unfortunate because I've had a very fortunate life. But the problem with that is, and I experienced it, and maybe I haven't been as fortunate as, as others, but I've experienced it where you, you feel like you miss those, like, you know, the, the calluses on, on your life that you have not really hardened as much. So you come across things and they kind of affect you faster than they should, or you feel a little bit too, too fearful to act when you need to. And I think that that is one of those, that's why courage is, is one of those virtues that I feel I need more practice with to speak my mind, you know, to to share my opinion when it's when it's needed and maybe when it's controversial, which I might think it's controversial. So, that yeah, I definitely have I have experienced the the the, the other side of courage, but now over the last few years, I and mean, when I look at myself, you know, I've turned I I left teaching to become more of a writer. Right, to be to put myself out there, and why did I do that? Is because I wanted to seek out those moments where my ideas were being criticized, where my ideas were being, you know, judged by others. You know, writing about stoicism, 
first of all, because I wanted to learn more about it, but then finding out, okay, my ideas are nice to have in a vacuum of my own mind, but if I put them out there, what do other people think? And I have to, you know, admit the first times I, I did that, I pressed publish, you know, I was nervous and I would just like look at, you know, like someone responding and if they would respond with some bad kind of news or bad kind of, you know, comments, I, I would just, oh, I've got to reply. I've got to say something smart here. At the end of the day, you realize it's just opinions of others and you've got to look at it objectively to see, okay, what is true? What, what is true about what they're saying? Is it something that I can use? Do I need to change? Do I need to study a bit more? Do I need to be better at it? So for me, that was a very big step of being more courageous and feeling kind of what I think might be part of my purpose, you know, when you have that innate drive of doing something. So now it's a lot easier to publish. Right now it's a lot easier to write and to, to maybe be more vulnerable I am out to the, to the world around myself. I think that that is also something that a lot of people struggle with, you know, to be more vulnerable and ask for help and senses. So yeah, courage has is been is a big one and I'm still working on it. But if I have to give one example, and in this case, it's putting myself out there, you know, making, you know, showing that, hey, I think I know something and, and this is it. And just let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, th- those are kind of, you know, some of my journeys as I go about with courage. But uh, what about you, Bryce? What yeah. Is, uh, what are the things that you have experienced? With courage? Well, I mean, I had a couple, couple things that came to mind, and uh, one of them so I probably won't share. It's kind of embarrassing as where I, where I was trying to be courageous, and it kind of backfired. But I'll just summarize that is that it's a learning experience. And, and sometimes we reach out to be courageous with the what we think the right things are in mind, and, and, and that doesn't work out. But that doesn't mean it's a fail. Again, the courage is about taking risk. And if it's a calculated risk and it doesn't work in your favor, that's okay. You did it for the right reasons and the Stoics are big in process over outcome. And so that that's something to keep in mind that if you have a hard time putting yourself out there or you struggle with something and then you kind of do, you do feel brave, you do feel courageous and it doesn't work out, it, it's going to take some patience and some intestinal fortitude for you to kind of give it another try and keep working at it. Remember, these are all processes. These are all practices. And there are other adjacent parts of stoicism that help us here. You look at the dichotomy of control. So if it's something that I I can't control, like Benny was talking about other people's opinions, that can be crippling. And I think that's, I'm glad Benny brought that up because I think we've, we've had our personal discussions in the past. And I think we kind of grew up as people pleasers and not wanting to rock the boat and things of that nature. And that's okay. And I think a lot of people are like that way. And that, that that's okay in, in, in one way. But really, is that being courageous, right? Are you putting yourself out there? Are you really saying what your thoughts and your feelings are? Or are you living somebody else's idea of things? And that's a uh, self-discovery that I went through probably about five or six years ago, where I just kind of woke up one day and realized that I had some successes in life, but I really wasn't being courageous and living for my own values, you know, what were my virtues? I was just following along and doing what I was supposed to. And, and I wanted to be thought of well, and I wanted to be living in the right neighborhood and making the right amount of money and all these other types of things. And was that really consistent with how I saw the world and how I felt I should be applying what I have to give to the world? And, and the answer was no. So for a long time, I wasn't being courageous. I thought I was, I was successful to some degree, but that had nothing to do with courage. That had to do with falling in line. That has changed. So I'm less of a people pleaser now, which some people will point out to me. And that doesn't mean that you have to be difficult or anything, but you have to know what you, who you are and what you stand for. And that's, that's one layer of, of, of self-empowerment. Once you figure that out, then it's about going back out into the world and showing that and saying, hey, I believe in this, I believe this is right, and you don't care who. And that's what we talk about with the dichotomy of control is that I can't be a people pleaser because that goes exactly opposite to what the Stoics are telling us, right? That is outside of my control what people are going to think of me. But I have to risk it, have to be courageous. As long as I'm living virtuously and I'm trying to do the best that I can, I have to believe in that and be comfortable with that. That's a common thing that an execution of courage that we could point to every day. And, and it's a very common thing because what Benny was talking about in general is something I've felt in, in my own person. 
just remember, if you, if you don't take these risks, if you don't show that you're being courageous, I mean, it's self-defeating. You're just going to say it stay in the same spot. Growth takes pain and pain in the sense that not pain you can't recover from. It's just something that's going to be uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable is not the worst thing. In fact, it might be the best thing. And once you get that in your mind, then you look for opportunities to be courageous. You look for opportunities to take risks. Why? Because you can grow. Because there's going to be times where you show some courage and you don't get the outcome you want. And you're going to have to be patient and try again. There's other times you're going to reach out. And, and Benny, you could probably think of something quickly where you say, hey, I'm not going to be afraid to do this and do it. And it, and it worked out. Like all the things that you feared just didn't come to fruition. It was easy. It was shockingly easy. Like, why didn't I do this last year? Why didn't I do this five years ago? Why didn't I do this 10 years ago? I think I think a, a measure of success is that I want to be living a life where I don't say that anymore. Why didn't I do this? What do you think? You know, one of the things that I love about having these conversations and, you know, we, we have these conversations, just the two of us and a lot of one other ways and it always adds something to it, right? And and as you were talking and as I was, you know, thinking a lot of what you were saying, I was like, hey, what were my beliefs back in the day? And as I just spoke about not feeling very courageous and, and I was thinking, I didn't have that the strong beliefs of what I stood for and what was important to me until I started really working on myself and made a decision of what I want my life to be like and what I think a good life is. And how I want other people to live around me, right? If I want, I want to uplift people and help them. So this is the great thing about having conversations like this and 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 discussing these things because it, it helps you break through some things. And I feel like now I finally, over the last few years, I have some some beliefs to stand up for, which makes me move towards that act of courage where I say, no, these are the things that I believe in, and I need to stand up for those. Right? I think that this is the right way to live not just to other people, but to myself as well. For example, with things like uh, food, right, or drinking or, or actions or maybe exercising, taking care of myself. Those are the things that I say, okay, this is what I believe in and this is what I've got to uh, act on. This is how I've got to act to to follow in those, to you know, to follow in those beliefs. So I think that that is something that as you were talking, I was thinking, yeah, you know, this is, this is probably one of the biggest changes that I have had in these last few years and that's when courage kind of follows naturally but that instinctive feeling is like no this is what i've got to stand my ground so that, you know that's why i love having these conversations and as you said you know some other examples of where you have to apply that courage is for example at work admitting your failures that's one of those things that where courage is needed i've had many times where i made a mistake at work and, and you sit there it's like oh man this is gonna be difficult it's gonna i don't, I don't know what's gonna happen i might lose my job or whatever at the beginning, the longer you wait, the worse it gets. That's what I used to do is kind of sit there and say, okay, maybe I can solve this myself. And then you realize and, that you can and it's too far ahead. And after a few years and, and with the experience, you learn, oh, the, the faster you admit to some of your mistakes, the easier it is to solve them. I think that that takes that courage as well to say, okay, you know what? I've made a mistake. And I just mean when it's a mistake that applies you know, that, with others, but also goes that impact yourself alone. You say, okay, I've made a mistake and I've got to attack it right now. I've got to take charge, take control and take agency of it and own up to it. And, and those things take courage. And the same thing with in relationships, when you've made mistakes or when you've said the wrong thing or when you were wrong and things, you've got to say, okay, you know, this is where I was wrong and I've got to own up to it. But also when you were right, those are some other points in my life where I've said like, okay, if I feel that I'm right, I should stand up for myself a little bit more. So again, those are the things that when we talk about it and you ask, like, what are some instances, you know, that I think of myself that happened to me and maybe others have experienced them themselves, you know, work and a private lives with friends where you just say, okay, you know what, I've made a mistake. And what is the best way to, to handle with it is just to act and to just go for it directly and not, and not just wait and, and see what happens. Another take take you know ownership and have the courage to to admit it just to yourself and to to the people around you. Yeah, I know. I love how you still not to, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. How you the courage to admit it. I mean, even that process of self assessment, which Stoics demand, they want you to constantly. This is why you're journaling. Is you take the outputs of the day and the decisions that you made, and then kind of assess it and put it back into the machine and start the next day looking to refine constantly, you know, step after step after step. 
But even to get to a point, you know, I was discussing my own situation where I said, hey, I'm going to take a brutally honest look at myself. What have I been doing? Why have I been doing it? Who am I? What do I really believe? These are, it took me a while to sort it out because you just get trained and pushed in different directions and you realize so many people are living a life that isn't their own. So, but there's risk associated with that. You can go with the flow and keep enjoying the ride, or you can do the thing where you say, hey, who am I? What am I? Why am I doing this? Who, what, and why? And that could lead you to, to some actions that are painful to take, that take courage. That might be quitting a job that you've had for a long time. You know, Benny has, you know, he quit a job that, that he had for a while to go pursue something else. There's a risk involved. There takes some courage. You, you're sacrificing some stability for something else that you believe in, a higher belief or something more virtuous or, or you're not denying yourself its natural path. So even the point of saying, I'm going to take an inventory of my life and be honest with myself. And then what comes out of that, I'm willing to then further take action. That's another step of courage. So we're constantly putting ourselves in situations where we have to show that intestinal fortitude with that, uh, that quote that I was saying it, that said earlier, it's like, you know, the world wants to know if you're brave. Well, I want to know if I'm brave too. I got to prove it to myself. Nobody wants to be a coward. That's never good. You have to prove it to yourself. And as that quote said, eventually you have to prove it to the world. But you can do these things. You have the tools available to you. You can be courageous in any moment. It's totally within your grasp. And I would say further, it's necessary. So much so it's become a cardinal virtue. It's a necessary weapon. Even if you don't believe in this, the tenets of Stoicism, you can make a good argument for, for somebody who practices or shows a lot of courage as a, a, an addition to society, their addition to their, to their family, to themselves. Just, uh, no, great stuff. I mean, I love uh, having these conversations and kind of digging deep. And, you know, I mean, Benny talk all the time and having to think through these things and talk about these concepts you take for granted. It's like, cur what is courage? What is virtue? And then you kind of think about yourself and it's like, hey, I have been courageous. Hey, I have taken risks. Hey, I have done the hard thing. Hey, I've grown because of it. How much more could I grow if I had this front and center in my mind? instead of in the back of my mind. That's the whole purpose of these talks is to bring these things to the surface. And then you can see yourself in, in, in a broader picture and what big things that you can accomplish that maybe you just, you haven't been thinking about it. It hasn't been front and center uh, in your thinking. Well, it's time to change that. Yeah, it definitely is, uh, Bryce. And, and I think that that's what, you know, when we have these conversations, it makes you think a little bit deeper about these concepts. And, because, it, again, as you, even if you don't believe in these, in the, the, the stoic tenets, and if you think that stoicism is, might not be for you, but still, we, courage, you can't deny that something, you know, the virtues, courage, the wisdom, justice, and, and temperance, that, you know, that they have a big place in our lives. But then we need to understand what they are. I think that that's why we are having these conversations and uh, a little bit more. The, the first part that we did is a little bit more um, focused, and but that's important. It's important to have the definition straight because then you know when to when it happens. Because even, you know, we can act uh, impulsively courage, courageous, right? Impulsively courageous, but then we, we won't even recognize it. And if we look back at how we've acted, we can see that we've been more courageous than we often think. Even myself, we, we, you said it earlier, and then we recognize the courage that we have in ourselves sometimes too late. But still, we, we have it all in us, and we can, we can make something out of it. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's great to have this conversation and to, to really think about what it means to us and, and how we can improve. Because we cannot grow if we, if we don't go over our boundaries and our limits. That's where growth is found. And, you know, lastly, I just wanted to emphasize again, it's about practice. And you made a, you made a comment there where I was talking about, hey, I realized I overcame something and, and I could have done it a year ago or five years or 10 years beforehand sometimes. And you mentioned that being too late. I would say it's never too late to act courageous, right? It's, it's about understanding self. And if you make that, you have that epiphany and you, and you make that, oh my gosh, this, that, I should have, what I could have, should have. Okay, you quickly get rid of that. And then just say, I'm not going to continue that behavior. I'm going to take advantage of my opportunities going forward. I'm learning that 
because I had this success that other successes await me, then there's confidence that comes in that. So that confidence builds, then if I take my risk, right, I act courageous and in the moment and maybe it does, I don't get that outcome. I'm not, I'm not uh, taken aback by that. I won't hesitate. I'm when the next opportunity comes, if, if that's what needs to be done, I'm going to act again because I believe in the process, right? And Stoics are really focused on the process. And then the outcomes are what they are. They're data points, as I've said many times. And if we look at life that way, then it's just a matter of, again, practicing and executing, doing the right thing. And more often than not, over time, you're going to get good results and your confidence is going to continue to build. So I would just leave it for today is like, again, know that you're courageous already in your life, way more courageous than you probably think you are or you have been. But further, you can put yourselves in, in a position through practice and if through voluntary situations where you can build on that courage to a point where you become basically invincible, that you do not hesitate in the moment and once you define what you think the right path is and that the risk out, outweighs or the, the reward outweighs the risk to a virtuous decision, you will just do it. You will just do it. You won't think about it. And Benny brought up the book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow, which we always talk about in, in other rooms and discussions that we have. It gets brought up a lot. It becomes reflexive. Your logic and your reason is now ingrained in your decision-making. And, and now that's your impulse. Your impulse is something virtuous and something courageous in this particular case. And that's a great thing. I, don't, I think we, again, like Benny said, whether you believe in the tenets of Stoicism or not, I think we could all look around and, and know individuals that have acted courageously and we respect them highly, regardless of what their other belief systems are, how, how else they live their lives. To, to, to take a risk and with some pain involved to do the right thing is, is something that's very admirable and, and, and will always play well. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and leaving a review. Your feedback helps us reach more like-minded listeners on this journey of self-improvement. And remember, you can reach us on X at Bryce at Stoic Bryce, Benny at The Stoic Padawan, or look at our website, streetstoics.com. If you want to get in touch with us, email us at streetstoics at gmail.com. And remember, virtue is the only good. <laughs>